Let's go. Herman, <laughs> I hope he promised this is going to be uh, fair and balanced. I think so. Let's get the mics on. I'm going to help you with your mic. Don't rush me, young man. Careful you don't sit on your mic there, please. Herman, don't sit on your mic. Do you have help? Help us with this. Yes, I'll be right there to help you. So you've got to be careful that you don't knock this around, Store okay? Okay, when I put my pearls on lovely it. Lovely studio here, Bruce. Yes, thank you. We're glad to have you here. Thank you for coming today. We're uh, happy to have you on. Well, I'm glad you want to hear our side. Well, we want to give you a chance to be heard. Yes. <laughs> I ask you not to bang the mic as you're speaking. Yes. Uh, because if you do, then it's going to make a loud noise. Um, this so. mic is over my glasses here. Okay, Bruce. I'm sure we can fix it. Hold on one second, if you would. Bruce, I before we start, I Design want to tell you. I'm so I'm so grateful that you both came from Florida up for the show. Well, we did I have know that to. You just summer in Maine, correct? Yeah. That's true. But That's we true. had to check on the property, you know. Oh, uh huh. And have the boat worked on. Where is your uh, where Where is your property? Well, which one? Uh, the main property. It's oh, tell them about the. Uh, we, we keep it secret. Harpswell. We like to be private. We don't want. Uh, oh, you don't want a lot of people. We don't want a lot of people riffraff. You know, the little people yes. looking at our property. So you Bruce, never know. Bruce, I wanted to tell you. Yes. That Herman was so brave today. I am so proud of him. My Herman. He, uh, we went to the state house, you know. Oh, really? Because there was the health care rallies yeah. today. And Herman. You're in favor of health care for the people? Oh. No, Please. no, Please. no. We're, we were there to support our governor. He's trying to balance the budget. And he's trying to end welfare fraud and all that wasteful spending. Governor and LaPage. we needed to support him because the 99% were minute. there. Don't bang the mic there, Herman. Yes. Thank you. The 99% um. were there and no 1% representative. So my brave, my brave, brave Herman wore this hat. Yes. Wow. He represented us very proudly there. And what I did, I walked around and I served champagne to the 1% because Perfect. you know what would happen if, if they take away, they, if they balance, if, uh, if, they, if they maintain these health care um, expenditures, we are going to lose those tax cuts that the governor so nicely gave us last year. Oh, well, I'm and sure you're concerned about well, that. Well, we don't pay taxes in Maine because we don't, we're moving, we, we just vacationed here, so we really don't have to pay taxes. Oh, but, so you, well, then why are you complaining about it? Well, we want to see justice done overall to the oh, state. Yeah. We, we want to help LePage and, and, and the other one percenters. Well, let's, uh, let's save it for mm. the show. Let's save it for the show, but let me just uh, review things with you a little bit. Let me review. Uh, we're going to uh, go for about 28 minutes, and uh, in just a couple moments, they're going to give us the signal that we're going to start, uh, and then we'll uh, do about 20 minutes of the actual interview. I'll ask you questions, and, and then you'll... Uh, one minute to show time. Okay, oh. there we go. Oh. One minute. One minute. We're going to get started. Are you both ready? Uh, do you think... Uh, to represent ready. our kind. You got everything you need, Constance? Well, I think I have my one. hat. Almost ready. My colored hat. All right, so uh, okay. everything's outside. 15, Why in your seconds. 15 seconds. We're going to start. Okay. Please. 10 seconds. Here we go. Okay. We're getting ready. Okay. Let's give them. Hi, welcome to another edition of This Issue. I want to start by saying that uh, not too long ago I was in a local coffee shop and a man in a nice suit came in and said, are you the guy that has that uh, TV show This Issue? And I said I was. He said, how come you never have anyone from the other side on your show? How come you never interview those people? And I told him, well, actually, I think that the wealthy have ample opportunities to get their story out on mainstream media, 
the grassroots people that I normally interview, really, you don't find very much on television. But I decided to make an exception this one time. And so today, I've invited Constance and Herman Dollagrabber, who vacation in Maine. They, uh, also, they winter in Florida. They've flown up from Florida just to be on the show. And I've decided to ask them to uh, discuss the question of the economy and the growing economic divide in America. So thank you both for coming on the show. You both clearly are <coughs> upset with all the talk about taxing the rich and claims that we are in a class war. So please comment, Constance. Yes, I am very upset, Bruce, by all this class warfare talk. We're the job creators after all. You give us more tax breaks, and we buy expensive things so like mansions and yachts and pearls. A woman can never have enough pearls and exotic wines and clothes and rugs and uh, tropical plants for the garden. And don't forget... Be careful you don't choke yourself with those now. I don't want to... Well, yes, I'm, I'm quite used to wearing these. And you see, you can never wear enough pearls. So don't forget, Stunning. we summer in Maine. And you know what that means. We even buy local sometimes. Lobsters. All that creates jobs for the little people. We've worked ourselves to the bone to get where we are today, Bruce. We employ many people of them. But people just don't want to work. Mm. They want a handout. They want welfare. Let them work for their bread like I do. It's really time to teach them a lesson about how capitalism really works. Well, that's not fair, Herman. People actually are working harder all the time and doing it for less money. Productivity is going up and business profits are rising but people's real wages are actually shrinking. That doesn't seem to support your claim that people don't want to work. Why not return to a real 40-hour work week and have corporations hire more people? Heck, why not go to a 30-hour work week and create more jobs that way? Corporate profits are rising, but jobs are actually declining. Next, you'll be asking for a guaranteed annual income another one of your socialist ideas. You tell him, Herman. Our fine corporations are being run out of the country by greedy American workers who insist on things like health care, health care, more paid holidays, and excessive union wages. We must remain competitive in the global market. Oh, yes. Big picture. Well, Herman, the truth is that corporations have been moving jobs overseas for years because they can maximize their profits by hiring cheap labor in China, India, Indonesia, and other underdeveloped countries. In fact, many of these corporations, like General Electric, don't even pay taxes in the U.S. anymore. They've left the country high and dry. Greedy. They're so greedy. This class war talk has gotten so upsetting to me. Oh, that's not my medication. My doctor says I have a severe case of PTSD and that means I have to take pills all the time. I get so upset. PTSD? Post-traumatic stress disorder? Normally that's associated with having been in combat. Yes, exactly, Bruce. You understand me perfectly. This class warfare is like combat and those of us who have resources PTSD in my case stands for what post, does it stand for post privilege privileged privilege taxation suffers disorder all this talk of taxing the rich has made me ill people forget that the one percent are the risk takers the job creators 
they can't succeed without us, can they? No, I, and, and take, take our Governor LePage here in Maine, for instance. He's trying to get the lazy people off the welfare rolls so that he can balance our budget. But instead of applauding, people are howling with rage and anger at him. The artists and the unions are up in arms needlessly because he, he took down that terrible, that mural in the Department of Labor. It was too divisive. We need a new partnership between business and labor. That mural had strikers in it, Bruce. <gasps> you know, and that sends a message. What kind of a message is this sending to the main workers? What part of history, that part of history, is that what we need to forget? We're in a new period. But truthfully, Herman, isn't it, isn't it immoral to throw people with little or no income off main care? Where will they get health care without this help? Last year, Governor LePage gave tax cuts to the wealthiest here in Maine. Some Democrats in the state legislature even joined Republicans in voting for that. But that just made the budget crisis worse, which is now being used to justify even more cutbacks in social spending. Isn't that class warfare? That is the kind of class warfare I do support. Yes. We've got to bring our economy down or, or, or around. I mean, the best way is to give people like Constance and me more money. Do you realize how expensive champagne has gotten and membership in private clubs and repair for our yachts? Uh, these things have gone through the roof. Our limos are very expensive. The price of doing business has gone through the roof. It's not easy to throw big parties for the other job creators in our society. That's so true, Herman. You speak so well. Yes. We've had to cut back on the number of parties that we throw, Bruce. And don't let anybody know, but I've been tempted to water down the scotch. I oh. haven't done it yet. Oh. oh, my God. And in Maine, we just can't find any good help. Well, you know why? There's all kinds of unemployed out there, aren't there? But nobody's willing to work for minimum wage anymore. And Mainers just don't like taking orders. You see, life is not easy for us job creators. Very few understand our plight. Lately, we've been attacked relentlessly by this Occupy movement, <gasps> this rabble. These rabble are destroying our nation. Why shouldn't I keep what I have earned? Why shouldn't my grandchildren go to the best schools that I can afford? I agree, Herman. This Occupy is a plot. Well, how much does one really need? Like, how many homes do you need? And we have to wonder just how do rich people make so much money these days? The theft of workers' pensions by Wall Street and the use of virtual slave labor in China raise serious ethical questions about how money is made by folks like you. In this country, companies are laying off workers and people have to do the jobs of two or three other people while your profits keep rising. Wouldn't you call that exploitation? Don't all of our kids deserve to go to good schools? If my kids get sick, don't they too deserve the same health care as your grandkids, Herman? If Cuba can afford to give free health care to everybody, then why can't we as well? We need a better dream because the, the past dream ain't working so well. We need a new vision, one where everybody can get a fair shake. And one more thing, what about the cost of wars? Isn't endless war spending having a major negative impact on our economy here at home? We're currently wasting $12 billion every month in Afghanistan. Imagine how those funds would be used here in Maine. Goodness, no, these wars, these military are protecting our freedoms. They're good. Which, which freedoms are you referring to, Herman? Our freedom to promote free enterprise system to these backward nations. We help them out, the little people. Freedom to give us control of the world's oil. Freedom 
to protect natural gas and other vital resources. God knows that with these corporations in control of these resources and markets, we will see a better business climate. And globalization. It's called globalization, Bruce. God bless our troops. They are fighting for our freedom. And think of the jobs that the military has created for the little people. Oh, Herman. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag and of the to United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, God invisible, invisible with, with liberty, liberty and, and liberty for of all. <laughs> just liberty. Just liberty. We'll settle that. Oh, we must remember, too, how well our stock shares are doing now in uh, Lockheed Martin and Raytheon and is it General, General Dy Dynamics. 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 Dynamics? They've done so well in recent years. And we wouldn't want to harm the profit margins, would we, Bruce? Those fine young executives who run these weapons corporations are worth every penny they make. What could be a better investment of our tax dollars? But weapons makers only make big money if we keep the wars going, right? <laughs> of course! Oops. You've got it! Peace is so Oops. unprofitable. Oh. The world wants our weapons, so let's sell them our weapons. It makes great business sense. It makes perfect business sense. You socialists, the problem with you socialists, you don't think like businessmen. Yeah, I, I can see where you're coming from. But aren't you just making the arguments that benefit the 1% Constance? What about the other 99%? If we are to be one nation, don't we have to have fairness, equality, and yes, justice for all? Oh, oh this is dangerous oh, stuff. Oh, 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 please. Enough of this communist claptrap. The world has always been for those who are willing to pull themselves up by their bootstraps. Like Herman. I've always had to make my way in the world, Bruce. In fact, when mommy and daddy passed away a short while ago, a good portion of their taxes, their estate, was taxed. And I had to learn to make do on just over $75 million a year. Oh, oh my God. It was scandalous. I, oh, I, was, embarrassed. I was embarrassed. $75 I was embarrassed. Million. I was oh. embarrassed. Yes, the 99% want to take away our hard-earned estates. Why should our children have to pay inheritance taxes? It's no wonder that we've had to cut back on our charitable giving. It breaks my poor heart to have to say no to those extra appeals when the symphony ladies call. But there is a limit to our generosity, you know. Yes, I can see that. That's uh, certainly apparent. Uh, I actually read that the working classes give charitable donations at a higher percentage of their income than the wealthy do. That's a remarkable fact. Maybe it's because the working class understands why it is so important to have social programs in place, because they're only one paycheck away from being homeless themselves. It's not For rich folks like you, that's just more of an abstraction, I think. It's not polite to talk about class, young man. Yes. Very it's terrible. Yes. All those people thinking they can get a free ride. Don't you think that charity is bad for this nation's character? Yes. We're trying to build the character of the nation. The British got it right. Stiff upper lip, pull yourselves up by your bootstraps. That's the kind of thinking that I like. Go out and work harder for your bread. Pull yourselves up, every man for himself. Enough of this everyone together claptrap. Well, actually, Herman, my stiff upper lip is getting a little tired. Just a moment, I want to reintroduce you both to the audience. I'm doing a special show today. Uh, I'm interviewing two representatives from the upper crust, Constance and Herman Dollagrabber. Let me ask you both about the upcoming national election in November. Which of the Republicans do you support? Well, 
I am going to support Mitt Romney. Romney. I'll vote for Mitt Romney. He comes from a good Republican stock. He will serve our interests well. He showed he could even win in liberal Massachusetts. He's the perfect candidate for me. Oh, I see. Well, I'm not surprised. Constance, uh, I imagine you agree with Herman. Romney for you as well? Actually not. You'll, no? You'll be very surprised. Really? I'm, I'm dying to know. Who? You want to guess? Uh, Gingrich? No. Uh, Santorum? No. Ron Paul? You'll never guess. Oh. It'll be such a surprise. No, who, who would it be? I am going to vote for Obama. Obama? Yes, he's given us virtually everything we want. More tax cuts. And he's kept our war dividends high. He's chipping away at that dreadful social security mm. program and the civil liberties of the rabble. <laughs> and there's one more thing really important until this recent Occupy nonsense. Obama has kept the left wing relatively quiet. Plus, he supports fracking, drilling for oil, more oil charter schools, and he hasn't even mentioned climate change in the last year or two. So why would we want to give that up, Bruce? We can have our cake and eat it too. So I'm voting for Obama. Wow. Well, that is a, actually a shock. But I can see your logic. Uh, increasingly, uh, Constance, many on the left are saying that Obama is essentially a tool of the oligarchy. <gasps> Oligarchy. oligarchy? What on earth, earth are, are you, you talking, talking about, about, my, my good man? man? There is There's no, no such, such thing, thing as oligarchy here in our fair country in America. This man is dangerous. He's he spreading is. hate. You are. Well, actually, I think oligarchy is the right word to describe our current situation in America. The dictionary describes oligarchy as a government in which power is in the hands of a few. It seems with the corporate domination of our government and the recent Supreme Court decision that said corporations can spend as much money as they want on elections, the little people, as you call, like to call them, don't stand a chance. Oh, Herman, what have we gotten ourselves into here, being on this program? You promised me he was going to be a fair Yes. And balanced interviewer. Uh, I think I've been mm -hmm. fair and I think I've been balanced. I don't think so, young man. Instead, we're being subjected to accusations and class warfare attacks. He's a socialist, Herman. I think he's a socialist. I think we need to end this right now. I've had enough of this. My PTSD is acting up. Let's go, Herman, please. Let's go. You I'm going to go start packing. Which, one ho which home? One of the, one oh, of the, the nearest. You are right, Constance. I do believe this man has led us into a trap. He oh, obviously well, has a hidden agenda yeah, here. I think I've been very upfront. I'm not at all everything. comfortable continuing this interview. The first thing I shall do when I get home is to call the company that produces this show and lodge a strong complaint. And then I shall call the advertisers and get them to pull their support for this, this show. Well, that might be a bit of a problem, Herman, because this is public access TV, and there's no company that you can call and take us off the air. It's one of the few places where the little people are given airtime and can stand up to the big corporate media machine that now controls the message across the nation and even around the world. We shall see about that, young man. We have our ways, money, always talks and we intend to put a stop to what you're doing here you take that my good man it's so unfair come on herman we're leaving you're right constance and when i get home the first thing i'm going to do is to call my lawyers my team of lawyers and you'll be hearing from them Please uh, make sure you take your mic off before you go oh. anywhere. Oh. Is, there a, is there a lackey I'd, to, I'd to have take to, this? I'd have to send you the bill. Oh! Other, uh, oh! Because they're very expensive. Oh. And I'm sure as tight as you are, you don't want to be paying for it. Oh, can you do it? I can't uh, you see it. You and hurry up, young man. Didn't get your hands off of me. Bring the limo around, please. Okay, go ahead. Is it, it's, uh, is it's tangled, tangled up in, in your... In your uh, there you go. The black limo, not Thank the red you. one.
Well, I'm sorry that you uh, feel this way. I'm sorry that you're leaving. Uh, We're leaving in a hall. What can I say? Uh, thank you for thank you for coming on the show. Well, that was not totally unexpected. I knew when I invited uh, Constance and Herman Dollagrabber that it might be a bit rocky here on the show, but I tried to offer the rich and powerful a chance to give their side of the story. We can see that they don't like to be challenged by anyone, such as life in America today. I guess that we'll have to do it for now then. I can only conclude that we need even more uh, sources of alternative media so that we can get our message, the message of the 99% out there to the public. Anyway, thanks for watching another edition of this issue. Until next time, good luck to you all and please get organized.